Hey guys, it's Jane. It's uh, not quite Friday. It's Thursday afternoon and I'm filming this one early because I'm not going to be around tomorrow. I'm going to my pre-VidCon volunteer training and then I'm going out for lunch with a friend and da da da, -da. So I'm filming this one early um, but I won't upload it until about the normal time. So hopefully it won't put anybody out. I'm a bit excited about VidCon, but um, I'm also a little bit anxious. Um, I've tried to organize this meetup, but I'm not, it's been tricky in that I don't really, I'm not really familiar with the layout, the internal layout of the convention center. And so it's it's been hard to imagine how to describe where we should meet. But um, it's the 21st century and you know, communication technology. I'm sure we'll figure something out. I'm sure something will happen. <laughs> so that's all going on this weekend and I'm a little bit excited about that. I have done a bit of reading this week, although not a huge amount, but let me tell you what I've read. The first book that I finished this week was Peter Tarias's United States of Japan. This is a book that I had heard people talking about reading, but I don't know that I've actually heard a in-depth review of it. And then I found it in my library and the cover was pretty compelling. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to give that a go. I almost DNF'd it quite early on, um, just not because it was bad, but because it was pretty emotionally grueling. The story opens on a Japanese internment camp in the Second World War. And on the day that the story sort of starts, um, the camp is liberated by the Japanese Imperial Army, who it turns out have just nuked a couple of different sites on the west coast of America. And the Americans have surrendered and the Japanese and their allies, uh, Nazi Germany, have won the Second World War. It's received as a bit of a mixed blessing by the folk in the internment camp who are basically our point of view characters. Yeah, things kind of go wobbly pretty quickly. Um, there's two people who we particularly follow out of the internment camp, a girl and a boy, um, a young like teenagers, who it turns out um, are having a baby together and the next section of the book after this sort of prologue is we flash forwards 30 plus years and we're now following the child that was the product of these, uh, this pregnancy at the beginning of the book. So our main character is uh, a captain in the Japanese army uh, in America, which is no longer known as America, it's the United States of Japan. And he is a, not, a, he's a career officer, but not of a kind of brown nosing variety. He's pretty laid back. Um, he seems to spend a lot of his time carousing. He, his work is that he oversees um, a censorship bureau and um, he's a bit of a dab hand at computer technology. Uh, he's a bit of an intriguing character and it's really not until the very end, like the very end of the book, that there is this reveal which really explains his situation. So for the main run of the story, uh, he's a little bit difficult to know what to do with. Um, so he is one of the main characters and another main character is this really gung-ho Japanese um, army officer who uh, is very a big stickler for the law at the beginning of um, the story and the two of them are thrust into this situation where they have to kind of resolve um, something that's going on. So it's, it's about war, it's about um, power structures and it's about race in America and uh, it's really quite emotionally harrowing, but also um, like there's a lot of meat in that story. So I don't know if I had known quite what the book was about, I necessarily would have picked it up just 
because I wasn't really quite emotionally equipped to, to deal with it as well as I could. Having said that, it's a really good read. Uh, the next book that I picked up was much less demanding. It was Gap Year in Ghost Town, which is a YA story set in Melbourne, and um, it was fluffy and delightful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it follows this 18-year-old um, guy who comes from a family who have a history um, dealing with ghosts. Uh, there are people around the world who, you know, who have the sight, who have ghost sight, and they're, they have formed up historically into different companies who kind of basically stand between the ghosts and people because... Um, Ghosts, if they are left to their own devices, can, you know, they in extreme cases they can kill people, but even um, even though that's rare, they um, if you are being haunted, your energy will be being sucked. It will, it will kind of unbalance your life and your health and stuff like that, and it's just not good. And so there are people going around dealing with these ghosts. Anyway, our central character... Um, has grown up in this family who do this for a living and he's now sort of coming of age he is unsure whether he really wants to take on the family business and so he's made this deal with his dad that um, he's applied to university and he's deferred it for a year and his father has said that you know if he really throws himself into the ghost business for a year and really, really puts in a, a top effort for a year that at the end of the year, if he still doesn't want to pursue it, then his dad will support him doing, going to uni and, and you know, leaving, leaving this life behind. The next thing that happens is that uh, out patrolling one night, he runs into this... Um, a similar aged girl with this like super glamorous look you know leather and a cape and a great big sword and she he is kind of fumbling some deal with a ghost and she sort of steps in and kind of you know <laughs> snicker snacks the, the ghost and so and then she has a British accent and it's all kind of like you know <laughs> <laughs> Who are you um, trespassing on my territory? And anyway, she is a representative of one of these other companies um, and not a small, you know, family concern, but this big sort of quasi-military um, ghost fighting corporation. And, um, yeah, there's a bit of friction between the two of them before they, you know, basically become friends. There's a little bit of... Um, romantic tension but nothing beyond what you would kind of naturally expect between a girl and a guy of this of similar sort of age um who are otherwise unattached um and i actually thought that stuff was really nicely handled that it was kind of present without overwhelming the story um so often with ya there's just feels like there's this stapled in romance plot which just detracts from everything else and that wasn't the case here um, what it turns out is that there is this really quite unusually dangerous ghost thing happening in Melbourne. There's this series of like um, super mega bad ghosts who are rarely sighted and they kind of come across three in a week or something. There's obviously something going down and then a couple of people end up dead and yeah. Um, our heroes have to kind of fix stuff and it's it's just a very enjoyable not too you know demanding well-paced um, adventure story and I very much enjoyed it the only other thing that I've read this week I started um, Andre Norton's The Time Traders uh, it was first published in 958 haven't got very far into it. I've never read anything by Andre Norton before. She's a really interesting character in sort of history of science fiction and fantasy. So, um, you know, I need I need to kind of give her a whirl. Thus far, I think the politest thing that I can say is thus far it seems to be pretty much a product of its time, but I'm not that far into it. So we'll, I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. Maybe I'll um, be pleasantly surprised. That's all I've really got to talk to you about today. Um, 
I'd love to hear what you guys are reading. If anybody's read either of these two stories, I'd love to hear what you think. I'll be back next week to tell you all the doings at VidCon and, you know, other things as well. I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.